so welcome everybody uh i and i welcome everybody who is joining both from uh, europe but also on the other side uh, from us canada uh so overseas uh, and i hope you guys could make it because i'm always choosing this time so that also people from uh, boston uh, massachusetts um, uh, can also join where i also um, develop uh, um, my own uh, collaborative also uh, projects, but also uh, joined and participated in, uh, especially in Cambridge community online. So that was really a pleasure to also experience uh, Boston uh, entrepreneurial community, meeting other uh, people like-minded entrepreneurs, scientists. And today uh, this session is uh, actually made for PG students and for postdocs. Uh, so to give this quality time, which I think nowadays is very important to talk about this, uh, uh, name all the issues uh, and try to find solution, right, uh, as a community. So so idea of this live session is also to build community of com co consisting of PhD students and postdocs so that we all together can empower and find solutions how to create brighter and also what I uh, already mentioned in the last session, sustainable future uh, for PhD students and uh, postdocs. Um, shortly introducing myself, although you can watch already today, actually I'm running 17th uh, live session uh, discussing uh, how to uh, create a brighter future um, for PhD students and postdocs. So it's 17th already um, time I'm doing it. So uh, for those which would like to know, maybe at least <laughs> Uh, some short introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Aneta schapko uh, I'm PhD, uh, entrepreneur, um, uh, scientist, agile coach, uh, and have, I have my own startup in the Leiden Bioscience Park, which is the oldest and the biggest uh, biotech park in Netherlands, uh, with more than, I think, 200 organizations already, even I would dare to say 300. Uh, it's growing and it's upscaling. Uh, so, um, if you would like to know more about me, um, you can look into my uh, on, on my LinkedIn, uh, but also you can look at my Instagram and you can also look at uh, all live sessions, but also uh, vlogs uh, where I discuss um, uh, more about my startup activities uh, related to science oriented collaborative projects, but also agile uh, workshops in terms of team building uh, leadership. Uh, and of course, uh, creating opportunities for PhD students and, and uh, with the mission to grow and scale up my uh, startup uh, and uh, building on my, on my team of highly skilled uh, PhDs. Uh, so uh, that's a little bit about me. Uh, the third thing which I wanted to uh, think about, because sometimes I look that you guys are watching live sessions uh, but uh, could you also please subscribe uh, to my channel to also let this platform, let this also community community for PG students and postdoc grow. And, you know, more of us is there, more, more opportunities will uh, arise. Uh, so uh, I think uh, this is something which I'd like to uh, ask you uh, at the beginning. Uh, please subscribe. This doesn't cost anything, but you can bring your contribution to, and build, uh, be part of this active uh, community. So that's, uh, that's my uh, kind request to all of you, if you didn't do it uh, yet. I know that some of my coaches already did it. Uh, so um, thank you very much again uh, for your contribution. And I hope that you also find uh, all the content which I discuss uh, on, uh, on these sessions uh, very useful, because that's actually the, the deepest purpose, the highest purpose of it. Um, and as I told you, I did PhD, I followed by four postdocs and I set up my own startup uh, because I wanted to develop more collaborative projects. Then it came Agile, uh, actually, um, uh, I would say my sweet spot, Agile project management, but also Agile type of coaching, Agile type of team building, uh, developing it with other coaches. Um, because I strongly be believe, believed and I believe still that... Uh, a coaching, implementing coaching skills is very important, not only in, in a project driven collaboration, but also in empowering uh, PhD students and postdocs uh, to especially uh, what I already uh, discussed before, uh, make a relatively, relatively smooth transition from academia 
to industry. And I already brought uh, some uh, data which are um, in a way encouraging this uh, transition. One is that you can develop your career at, in industry uh, and develop it further as a researcher, right? So you don't have to change uh, right away your path. There are multiple options, um, but including also um, uh, researchers at industry. Uh, the other thing is uh, what is happening in academia, and, and I've done this through multiple uh, sessions at the beginning of the last year, talking about uh, around 0.5% of all PhDs uh, will become professors. So the rest has to find alternative path in uh, industry. Uh, and of course, uh, I also discussed some of these paths. Uh, today, I'm not going to go through all the paths, but uh, I uh, realized that to create this uh, kind of um, path, you also need to know, you know, what is the landscape, right? Uh, it's a little bit like I like uh, hiking in mountains and sometimes uh, I decide to, to choose a certain trail or certain, a certain walking path because of the landscape. But if you don't know the landscape, it's, it's, uh, I sometimes have the impression if you want to make a choice and make transition to industry, but you don't know actually what is the landscape. We call it actually in industry ecosystem. It's hard, right, to find find your your where you have to start in this transition, uh, because this is stepwise process. It is also some people, and I'm going to bring some inspiration today. It, this session wouldn't uh, be, I think, useful and interesting if I would not bring some inspiration and some testimonies of successful scientists and entrepreneurs uh, which moved from academia to industry. That, of course, this is a journey. And this journey requires a lot of motivation. Uh, a lot of persistence, a lot of resilience, right? To be able to find well-matched job in industry. And in this journey, in this stepwise process, uh, which is very difficult uh, for academic person, and I know it very well because I've been through PhD, I've done postdocs for postdocs in three different countries, um, uh, and I realized very quickly how difficult actually this is because every ecosystem is different. And since seven years having my startup uh, I, and becoming more and more so as a co agile coach um, aware of how ecosystem is functioning here in Netherlands, but also in other in Europe, including Belgium, including Germany, um, including Poland. Uh, but also looking of overseas, uh, including uh, Massachusetts, so Boston, uh, which is very, one of the most vib vibrant scientifically, right? You have their MIT, Harvard Med School, uh, Harvard University, a lot of top uh, top universities in the world, one of actually the top universities in the world, uh, realize that this, to, make, to be able to make this transition, you cannot just do it on your own because it, this, this can be very difficult. Uh, uh, you don't know, or you, you don't have this knowledge, right? You uh, don't know exact direction, where to start. So that's why I decided also as a scientist, entrepreneur, entrepreneur but first of all, also coach, having this higher mission to uh, help individually every PhD uh, student and every postdoc, which would like to make this transition and find well-matched job. And here I come as a, a agile coach, uh, which will um, develop for you personalized um, uh, coaching. Actually, not develop, but we will. I will perform personalized, um, customized coaching to help you uh, based on your unique strengths um, and uh, your, of course, professional uh, background, your hard skills to find a well-matched job. So, if you are uh, interested about more uh, how the coaching program. Uh, looks like uh, I think uh, some of uh, you already uh, asked me uh, if I could comment a little bit about the, the coaching program. Um, so this is stepwise uh, coaching. 
uh, we cannot move from uh, from industry to to uh, from academia sorry to industry in uh, in at one jump run right? right it's not one step but it's multiple steps and it starts from a uh, cv so i'm help uh, i help you to prepare a cv which is outstanding for industry uh, this is not typical academic cv at all um, and uh, it requires certain level of creativity uh, so i'm helping you here as a facilitator uh, but also as a practitioner right helping you to uh, make cv create cv which is um, uh, highlighting your uh, unique personal strengths but also based on the strengths, we uh, create CV, which is outstanding in, with including your hard skills for academia. Then we move to cover letters. They are very important. Uh, some people uh, actually I met, which, thought, which were suggesting that actually cover letters are not important. Yes, they are. Some of my coaches actually uh, um, uh, was important uh, to write actually sort of uh, hiring cover letter and so this means that uh, cover letter may decide upon if you will be invited for interview or not right which is the next step um, and i would only uh, like to also tell you that creating the cv is not just one type of cv uh, this are depending on the job depending on the position uh, you prepare actually resume so i'm helping uh, with that uh, two. So the, this are uh, the, I, we start usually from um, master CV going to create resume for a particular position, uh, writing uh, cover letters, uh, which are also uh, standing out, uh, which are very personalized, including elements of storytelling, but also highlighted uh, um, uh, cases where where you had, a, for example, um, challenge in your project and you. Um, uh, showed how uh, yeah how your project management skills help you to achieve um, the given results or success of the team companies are really uh, i would say thrive uh, on such stories and they want to see in their teams uh, people which uh, can find a solution right which are uh, troubleshooting uh, which are solution driven uh, which are proactive so all these uh, skills, which I always uh, already discussed, all the skills like project management and writing uh, skills are very important for industry. These are so-called transferable skills. And you should never think that whatever, whatever you've learned in academia, it's something which may be not uh, useful. Uh, so uh, that's what I wanted to uh, say a little bit about this particular uh, skills and writing skills, especially also for cover letter is uh, they're essential. Then, of course, the next step is uh, interview. And uh, everything can go fine with preparing CV, with writing letter, with sending, right? And now we wait, usually. Or a potential uh, can job candidate is waiting till a company or um, hiring manager or recruiter will respond. But that's not always happening because, uh, you know, there's a lot there. So the competition is fierce, usually, nowadays. And... Uh, a lot, especially when you apply for very big international companies uh, like GMAP here in the Netherlands or Johnson & Johnson uh, or other companies. And in that case, it's also important to realize that, uh, well, if you will if you will succeed and, and be invited to for interview, then you also need to uh, make sure that you are very well prepared for in the interview. So you know actually about how to respond in impressive way because that's really important uh, first question is usually related to please tell me about yourself or could you uh, please uh, introduce shortly introduce yourself and do it in concise way because there will be more questions which of course recruiters recruiters or hiring manager would like to ask you so uh, i'm also uh, uh, as a third let's say uh, pillar of this training involve uh, training for interviews so that uh, candidates usually are very well uh, prepared uh, for interview. And that helps them also to uh, being trained before interview helps them to actually keep this confidence and, and not have like a freeze effect where or blackout where they don't know anymore what to say once they are invited at interview. Remember that interview is it's um, very uh, insightful also 
uh, time, quality time for, for you guys uh, as uh, potential job seekers, um, not only for a recruiting manager, you can also ask questions. Uh, and usually at the end, uh, for all the interviews I remember, uh, there's a space uh, for questions from candidates. And I think that's really important to actually prepare such questions, uh, one or two, uh, when you are invited for interview. And there will be probably the space that you also uh, can ask a question, at least one question. So that's something which I like to remind you. So this is a stepwise process coaching. It's very custom uh, customized, personalized uh, to candidate uh, two PhD students or postdoc. Depending if this is PhD student or postdoc, of course, uh, there will be also um, uh, customized uh, or personalized training and also depending on your skills, right? Uh, so if you have very good writing skills, you know, we can even accelerate this process. Uh, if you have very good presentation skills, that's probably going to be the interview uh, training, the, which is the last pillar of the coach of my coaching, will be probably the one which can uh, also uh, very much accelerate. And uh, having this uh, CVs and, and motivation uh, letters or skills, how to uh, prepare them uh, so that they are standing out for industry, uh, puts you uh, rather in high, I call it positioning, uh, perspective uh, to be invited for first interview and I think that's already pretty successful and uh, once you are in, in being invited multiple times for interviews higher chance you have to uh, uh, to simply get hired uh, and uh, yeah be very happy to uh, get your well matched uh, job so that's something about a uh, type of coaching scheme which I wanted to comment about because uh, I know that some of you were really interested. How does it really look like in process? So uh, I, th I hope that this is very clear. If you would like to schedule a short, because I do it globally. So I support uh, PhD students, postdocs globally uh, here in the Netherlands, uh, in Europe, but also over this, over, uh, overseas. So I'm also happy to uh, help you guys out in the United States because I also realized that, uh, of course, in Europe, um, uh, which is more conservative, I would say, in terms of thinking. We always think like, well, I am, uh, I am uh, coming from academic European institute, and like to find a job in in Europe. But I think that 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 you have to have open mindset or agile mindset, which I'm going to tell you in a minute about. To keep keep your perspective, especially when you're relatively still young or your first postdoc and. You know, you don't have yet children, for example, in terms of, for women, that's probably more relevant, but or 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 you uh, are not yet father or don't think yet about setting a family. So if you're single still, of course, there is option. But even with families, I think this is this can also work out very well. I don't know su such uh, people which did that. Um, you can move, you know, to U.S. You can move to Canada. Uh, you can simply from Europe, you can move out of Europe and uh, start to work for a multinational company uh, in other countries. So you are not really so, so you don't have to be so much bound to, to the location where you are. But uh, you can also uh, move to other country. You can also consider if you're not sure yet about moving uh, to other physical location, consider a remote job in international U.S. based company uh, or maybe hybrid. So, the, you know, all options are possible nowadays. And I think because of Corona, numbers of all options, especially including remote jobs and hybrid jobs, uh, uh, exponentially, I think, uh, increased. So um, this is uh, something which I'd like to uh, first uh, tell you about. So if you uh, struggle also, that's another thing. Um, um, if you struggle... You don't know uh, what to do. Uh, you, what to do first or next? Uh, I'm also help can help you with drawing sort of or developing scenario for your um, for your transition from academia to industry. So now about mindset, agile mindset. Uh, if you would like to uh, know more about the, this mindset so way of thinking it's flexible adaptable uh, some people uh, correlate agile mindset with growth mindset uh, so uh, where phd is not the last destination but actually 
it's a starting point, especially when you think about transition or developing your career path. That's that's really important, different way of thinking um, uh, than a traditional uh, way of uh, thinking. And uh, of course, for this transition, you, as I said to you, you need motivation. That's a key. And here I'm also uh, acting as a coach, as your coach facilitator in this process, as a motivator, as your key motivator. When you don't uh, actually, after some of you maybe heard so many times you, your application was rejected, your motivation level goes down. So I'm here to increase your uh, motivation level. And uh, important for me is uh, something which I like to also give you some inspiration. It's one of my, uh, actually, um, I would say icons, uh, I iconic people, which I really truly admire, uh, which are scientists or academics, entrepreneurs. And uh, I'd like to today uh, bring a book. Uh, this is the book uh, LIT, so Life Ignition Tools, Use Nature's Playbook to Energize Your Brain, Spark Ideas and Ignite Action. This book was written by Jeff Karp uh, with Teresa uh, Barker, and this is a re recently published book. Um, Jeff uh, Karper, actually, I met uh, on, uh, I think, one of the online events in uh, Boston Cambridge community. Um, and what I was uh, very much, uh, very much uh, inspired uh, is, is a book which he wrote to help uh, to achieve greater mental performance and creativity in the age of constant destruction, um, always urgent deadlines, which we probably have everybody um, to, to deal with, uh, and mindless social media scrolling and anxiety inducing 24 per 7 news. And I think this news, this scrolling, uh, being uh, simply uh, burned and overstimulated uh, be, can be uh, possible that this book can become really a remedy. Uh, but apart from it, uh, this uh, life ignition tools which uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff Karp developed, and uh, he is, uh, just to uh, remind you, uh, he's professor at Harvard Med School, affiliate faculty at MIT and the Broad Institute and principal faculty at Harvard Stem Cell Institute. So he, he's uh, at one of the, I would say, top uh, academic um, um, uh, scientists, um, which is also innovator, which also is in biotech, uh, uh, having multiple startups and developing um, uh, projects also at academia. Uh, so... Uh, I really, uh, in, uh, well, for me, he's a great inspiration, but he's also, uh, his lesson, his life, which he also shares in this book, um, and also some interviews can give uh, you strength, can be empowering. Uh, so he ha he's definitely coach, even officially he doesn't really call himself, but mentor definitely he's one of the best mentors. And uh, this uh, life ignition tools, uh, um, as Jeff uh, <clears throat> indicates, uh, help you to turn inward, to connect with what is truly important to you, your values, and take inspired action, uh, manage distractions and information overload, and break out of habitual thinking to discover what serves you best. And exactly this break out of habitual thinking to discover what serves you best can be referable or relatable to agile mindset. So think different, do things different, right? Or do something. Right. If you never tried anything, uh, because it is try and error, and I think uh, process. So uh, also applying and making transition, it's a try error process. This path is never uh, completely uh, smooth. So uh, you will, because of uh, writing letters, because of networking there with people, talking about asking them how you know what is your position, how your day looks like in this particular uh, company at this particular function will help you actually to, to really learn a lot about, uh, you know, uh, especially for those who don't know so much about business or industry ecosystem, you know, where is your, uh, where is your place, uh, where you would like to uh, be. Uh, so now I'd like to 
regarding this journey, this this career path, uh, also as agile coach, I'd like to um, explore this path with you, right? Helping you um, in coaching process to receive well matched job, but also facilitate this journey. And this journey is very inspirational from academia to industry. And I'd like to actually call it journey. And now, um, as I already showed you the book, uh, I'd like to uh, share with you uh, some, um, I think, important uh, parts or fragments, which I found particularly uh, inspiring, but also giving you this ignition, this, this motivation, ignition uh, described by Jeff. Uh, so uh, please... Uh, uh, now turn, especially your active listening. Uh, this uh, professor Jeff Kerr is very smart, so it's also something which I hope uh, it will be very clear for you uh, and understandable. Wrong fit, shed the shoe. Although it might look to an outsider as if my path in science and biomedical innovation was reasonable, logical, and well-planned, that's not how it has ever felt. I was guided by the pain point of how I felt when I was not aligning my choices with my curiosity. And I'd like to make a stop here. Pain point. That's something which is uh, defined in uh, industry, especially when we talk about clients, something which client uh, struggles with or would like to receive, but he doesn't know how to do it. And services, consultancies, helping them to understand in depth they, her, his pain point, what he struggles with, and help him to find solutions. So again, I was guided by the pain point of how I felt when I was not aligning my choices with my curiosity. So choices. Curiosity. Alignment. Alignment was not there. So curiosity-driven choices. That's what uh, keeps, uh, actually, Jeff being motivated. I needed to focus on what I was most curious about. If I ignored that inner guidance, I could feel the wrong fit like a bad shoe or the wrong boot for a long hike. And, of course, Jeff is talking here about your, your inner, uh, in, in a way, uh, guidance, right? Your instinct, your gut, what gut, your gut tells you. That's very important. But at the same time, not everybody can actually meditate and find what, what you know, what is your instinct is, is driving you towards which direction. Not always. This is very easy. If you, for example, in a not, I call it permissive environment, you will never hear your voice. You will never find a guidance because, um, you will be very much not aligned even with yourself. And if you are not aligned with yourself, it's very difficult to find this inner guidance. And that's why coaches like me, agile coaches with agile minds can help you to find out, uh, uh, find out and in a way expose your inner um, uh, uh, guidance or help you to discover your inner, in a way, potential and ask by asking you questions. And I think this very interactive process of a coach and coachee is very important here to discover this inner, this inner guidance, this inner gut, which very often you actually uh, cannot really uh, find, find in you. It's, it's not easy process itself and it requires, it requires actually coaching. So, Along my journey, 
uh, Jeff is sharing, I learned to follow my interest, discovering a new one and then another. So multiple interests. I would say that looking at this, I would say define some set of like three, four interests, because if you just keep keep developing new and new interests, I'm afraid that you can be at some point lost. And I'm kind of telling it from the coach perspective. I think having three, four interests is fine, but having like multiple interests and looking for new ones, I think this can be very um, uh, destructing itself. Uh, for me, as for Linda Stone, it was my curiosity that drove me and working without the, that energy was a pain point that kept me focused, like guideposts on a trail. I had to learn to live with, even thrive with, the element, the element of uncertainty on the path. So that's another thing which I'd like to bring here. And I know that this is difficult. Peace. Un or feeling uncertain. So not being sure about the next step. I couldn't let avoiding uncertainty become the pain point. So we talk about pain points and uncertainty is a pain point. You don't know if you will get a good job. You don't know if what will happen uh, in two months, uh, you you don't know where to start. This all generates uncertainty, very unpleasant, uncomfortable feeling. And I think that's something which we all, not only as a scientist, but as people experienced. It, and it doesn't matter which type of path or career path or life we choose, there will be always uncertainty. Even uh, I could even comment that I talked to some investors. Investors also take a risk by investing in some technology of startup, for example. But they don't know if this technology will work out, which will bring revenue. They can have predictions, but they will never have 100% certainty that everything will work out. So even investors may lose a lot of money because they will take too high risks. And uh, you, this means that you cannot avoid uncertainty in life and also in career professional life. But you should start to define uncertainty not just as a pain point. So Jeffrey said, in other words, I couldn't let avoiding uncertainty become the pain point, choosing options because they felt safer or more secure. So... Of course, Jeffrey was, is, uh, as you can hear, he's very ex exploring, right? He's looking for different interests. He's very brave. He just, I think, put, puts them himself there, right? That, that's also, you need to be a brave person to do that. But not everybody can do that. I, as a coach, can say that not everybody can um, put this uncertainty behind and just... Uh, take or make choices which are highly risky. Um, rather, uh, a lot of PhD students and postdocs uh, will choose an uh, option which they will feel safer or more secure, right? In terms of financial security, in terms of a permanent contract which industry offers, but uh, academia doesn't. Or better, higher salary, right? Choosing always safer. I mean, that's natural, uh, I think, human choice. Um, and then Jeffrey uh, is, so I'm a little bit commenting on that because I just want to tell you, applying this agile mindset that, you know, these decisions which we are making also in our career path to find this uh, next 12 my job in, in uh, industry are not always the choices which Jeffrey would choose. Uh, but it's good to see the other side. And, and I think I like because he brings this other side, this brave side, this high risky uh, 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 way of um, uh, living and innovating. And next he, he writes, uh, I had to reframe imposter syndrome as merely a sign that I was exploring new and unfamiliar territory that stoked my interest and curiosity. This is one of the cornerstones of the lab now, constantly getting into new areas of science or medicine that I'm curious about but unqualified for. So that's also something else. Uh, I think he very bravely and in very vulnerable way say that he's not expert, but he's just uh, uh, getting in the areas of science. He's not an expert. I think none of us 
would dare to be there if we would not be experts. We push ahead and find ways to bring in people with the right skills who can help us guide us. So that's the way, right? Find experts, find coaches and guide us. You don't have to have certainty or even confidence that something you want to try will work. So what we call failure, right? Again, different type of thinking, more American thinking. Failure is a lesson. So failure doesn't exist. And lesson you can take and learn and fast forward. So you don't have... You don't have to have certainty or even confidence that something you want to try will work. But as you head in, into the unknown, which I call in this career path, and it's a very relatable non-comfort zone, know that you are once again training yourself to discern, to tell when ideas are working and when they are not. In our case, these are strategies, choosing paths looking at different paths, talking to different people, networking. It's this process of learning, and I hear, I call it here active learning during direct networking. What works and what doesn't, that can, in and of itself, inject a sense of excitement into your life. So this transition, I hope that, I know that this will not ever sound exciting, uh, but believe me, there, need, there is part of this excitement, especially in inter interviews. If you think about interviews, this is a part of excitement. You don't know these people yet. You didn't have yet interaction, but now you are in, in front of maybe three or two managers and, uh, and they're asking you questions. They try to get to know you a little bit, not just your hard skills, but know you as a person. Uncertainty is intrinsic to that process. And there is so much energy in it. And that's what I found fascinating that where Jeffrey is discovering in uncertainty that there is so much energy in this uncertainty. And he defines it as a having an idea, believing in it, and going for it. And I think this, this three part, this three steps, because having an idea is the first, second is start to believe in it and then going for it. So bringing it and delivering it in terms of product, in terms of program, in terms of collaborative project. And even it was a certain because it was just idea, just at the beginning, something which even didn't turn into any physical product or collaboration or education product or, or job or a cover letter. It was just idea how to write it or how to prepare an outstanding CV. But now it's there. Now CV is there. So uh, this is this is this part of uncertainty. And, and of course, depending on the process, uh, there is more or less uncertainty present there. But also in collaborations, I can tell you that there is also a lot of uncertainties. And maybe I will also uh, make a vlog especially about uncertainty in the process of collaboration. Uh, and uncertainty in the process of uh, transition, right? It's, a, it's, it's always an a important process where there's a lot of unknown elements uh, and they can be relatable. James Ancrum's favorite takeaway from his sink or swim start, which I really love, American expressions, sink or swim, start. We had a saying in the lab when I was there, do something. It can be easy to get stuck in the planning and hypothetical stages of a project. So sometimes um, that's also is relatable to this transition um, where I see that um, where there's a lot of overthinking, but there is no action behind this. And that's why as a coach, actually, I motivate you here to bring action. So it can be easy to get stuck in the planning and hypothetical stages of the project and never actually pull the trigger to try something new and learn. That can be also related to academic research, right? I mean, to any type of our research and development project. So do something was our way to push each other to take risk. So learning by doing, typical essence of agile. He also remembers laughing now the lab meeting when I heard them saying this to each other. 
And I immediately reframe it as a do something. And here, I would not say reframe it, but bring it to the higher level. Do something big. Do something important. I would even go further. I would say do something useful, which actually currently I'm doing during the sessions. So today, Ankrum leads a lab where he creates an environment of impassionate, purpose-driven possibility for others. So many times we are bothered by feeling that we should intuitively know what to do next. But that's not true. I think we are not bothered uh, by the feeling. We are rather scared or we there is a fear that's even deeper than being bothered. Instead of thinking about what you should do next and thinking of your future as a single thing, uh, that would be great to have whole scenario, but no one is going to do that for us. Not going, no one is going to plan our life for, for us. I think that, that has to be the, the, uh, exactly the edge of life is to bring it and don't plan this uh, as a five years, 10 years track, but do it stepwise and see how it goes in terms of process. So important for, I mean, also for me as a coach, questions which Jeffrey brought, especially when you try to figure out your also transition, but your also alternative path, also bringing your element of, of this path. It's not my task as a coach to show you everything from A to B at very early, very small steps. We're going to bring everything in detail because you don't know exactly what to do. I'm going to bring you important steps, but the process overall around it, I will, of course, help you to I will help facilitate that. But you need to make in the end decision. You, if you will get job offer, it is your decision in the end. And this should be exciting too, to have this space to be the choice maker, right? You make the choice. How you're, you know, if you will get, if you receive this job, if you accept it, you make the choice and should be actually a, an enormous, uh, uh, not only excitement, but also uh, a luck that you are the one which is making this choice. So important in making this choice is also, which I really like that Jeffrey is talking about, figuring out what you are curious about, what excites you. If you want to stay in academia, what excites you about this? If you want to make transition, what, what excites you the most in this process? What could, do the ne what could you do next that you could enjoy for a while? Important word, enjoy. Right? What you could do to enjoy. Fun factor is very important. maybe working in a team, which you never had in academia because it was very competitive and everybody worked more individually uh, rather than in a team-oriented uh, fashion. So yeah, maybe teamwork in industry, it's that's something which will excite you to do uh, and uh, create something, create some product, create some uh, methodology, create some uh, prototype or build some prototype with others uh, which will serve patients. Well, that, that's something which can excite you or at least it's exciting me. Another thing is being showing how, actually uh, seeing how my coaches are growing and getting, uh, you know, choosing, making the making choices, also growing, growing and getting confidence, especially when they are very introverted and they start from very shy position. So what could you, very relevant question also for all you guys, Regarding brighter future, what could you do next that you could enjoy for a while, long enough to gain insight in what you like and what you don't like? And this don't like is important part. It's, it's not like every job need to be 100% likable. No, maybe there are things which you don't like, but majority of things you like a lot. To guide your future decisions and career. What bothers you enough to want to do something about this, right? So this, these are the questions which I'm also uh, 
are very much inspired and, and would like to implement also in, uh, in my coaching. Uh, and thank you very much, uh, Jeff, uh, for bringing this book. I'm, I'm truly delighted uh, if there is um, there's many, many lessons you share with a very big academic and, in, and industrial community. And we have 252 pages. So I think this book, uh, after uh, exploring book, which you've seen in previous sessions about growing and boosting your genius, this is the next book, which is uh, my favorite uh, this year. This year and the, this year uh, will stay uh, favorite for, for uh, I hope, very, very long time. And uh, I can implement also learnings from, Je from Jeff uh, into my coaching, but also into my collaborations, uh, because uh, we are very much like-minded people. Uh, we spark ideas, ignite action. I love doing it, especially igniting action, motivating in collaborations of others uh, and being scientist and entrepreneur. I think that's something which is important also here, uh, which uh, I share with Jeffrey and uh, being inspired by nature. So uh, I think this is... Uh, the person which I'm very much aligned with. So uh, that's something which I wanted to talk about. As you could see, first I talk about more structured of coaching, the purpose, uh, my introduction, experience. But this is actually something which uh, which I like to bring from this book. It's important part of the process. It's all is part of the process. Making choices, being driven by curiosity of company you want to join, identifying what is your weakness, but also what are your strengths. Right? And, and of course, it's it's uncertain process. Next, we have 14 minutes. The sessions are for those who are joining first time uh, are one hour. I could do, uh, once I did it for two hours, but I think I also have to, uh, please my apologies also, um, uh, save my uh, energy, but also save my voice. Um, because if I s will lose my voice because I talk too long at once, uh, which is possible to do for two hours, but I think it would be also very, very difficult for you guys to keep really and uh, listen actively. So keep attention. So that's why the sessions are one hour. Uh, now I'd like to switch to um, events, career events. So one of the places where you can learn a lot of, you can first of all meet hiring managers, recruiters, uh, screen your CV, get other feedback. Ask uh, people which are usually at these events, especially career job events, ask uh, about uh, their path, how they uh, actually, what was their motivation uh, what to, to work for the company, how uh, actually looked the uh, recruitation process. Um, and uh, you can ask them and, and initiate a, a relationship, what I call. And, and have a chat about their job functions and their responsibilities and how also their uh, day looks like. So uh, one of the events which I'd like to share with you, uh, it's an event uh, which will happen uh, 30 of May in Utrecht. It's a BCF career event. Uh, this is event uh, where you can register for free, so it's a free of charge event. And this is the largest uh, career event in Netherlands in the biotech. Uh, there will be companies, uh, I'd like to surely only comment about this, there will be booths with CV, uh, CV check, but there will be also recruiters uh, from uh, recruiter consultancy um, uh, companies. But also there will, there will be, and what I like the most and what I value the most, um, uh, uh, top leaders uh, re related to um, industry, uh, but also uh, 
human capital. Uh, that's very important uh, that we sh should not forget about companies which are actually uh, exposing uh, the talented and especially also PhD students and postdocs people and um, trying to help also these people um, to uh, find or define uh, their career direction. Uh, and this is uh, this is something which I also like that, of course, as a coach, I can coach limited numbers of PhD, PhD students and postdocs because I've limited uh, energy as a one person. Uh, but uh, there are also people um, uh, or companies behind uh, and my other other companies which uh, which can also help uh, help out. So uh, one of the people which I really like from representing industry is GeneMap. This is multinational company. Uh, there will be Martine van Vogt. And uh, sh a lot of these leaders, I very much uh, appreciate uh, also women, for women empowerment, uh, give presentations, and that was from the... Uh, to, they share, of course, their career path, but they also share the lessons, right? Um, uh, what they've learned. And, and taking these lessons is very important, also in learning process. So the keynote uh, speaker will be live uh, lessons on how to build a career and ha ha leave a legacy, Martina van Vogt from GeneMap. Uh, then uh, there will be a uh, joint Novodors growing manufacturing hub. Important thing for everybody who would like to join Novo, uh, Nordisk. This is uh, the company, actually Danish company, and the growing manufacturing hub. So it's good to know about actually expansion of these companies because if they usually if they expand, they usually hire new people, right? So this is something which which uh, you have to take into account related to even presentation title. The next is from MSD company. Why consider a career in biopharma manufacturing with an academic degree? Important message for everybody who um, have academic who is PhD and or who is also PhD students. It's always, as I told you, it's never too um, early to orientate. So uh, some of you probably think, once I will um, finish my PhD studies, I will defend, then I will look for a job. No, if you want to move and make this transition to industry and you know about this, start early, start really early before even you, um, even at the third year of doing your PhD, orientate. Initiate relationships. This is a process which really will help you to accelerate um, uh, later on. Once you uh, defend your PhD, uh, you can move way faster because you already uh, got ori well oriented in this business ecosystem, in pharma ecosystem. There will be companies from Organon, Kite, uh, GenDX, so uh, transplant diagnostic. Diagnostic is also an important part of industry. Um, then uh, there will be also, uh, as I said, booths with checking CV. Um, and of course, what I really like too, uh, there will be uh, women from farming, uh, AM Farm and Kite, uh, especially for females, empowerment of females, female PhD students and postdocs, empower your career from a female perspective. Uh, then... Uh, ECCRT, that's related to the organization more to clinical research and regulatory affairs. So if you think about clinical research moving from academia to industry, especially in terms of uh, preclinical research, uh, then there will be E. Uh, I just have to check this. Uh, yes, ESSRT. Check it on. Google it and check on um, this organization. It's always good to actually look at the companies because then you, before you even attend the uh, event, I would advise you to look at on, on the company's profile so that you know what is the general uh, uh, profile and pipeline uh, or research uh, line uh, which this company's particular focus, uh, their innovation. So then the next event which I'd like to share it's an event which I found very, very important, especially currently where we are moving to digital. Innovation. It's an event which is called Digital Science. And... 
you see an innovation day. This event will be uh, in Leiden. When uh, Thursday, May 2, so 2nd May. It's free of charge and it will be between 9 in the morning till 1. This is uh, four hours, so you have enough time to uh, join. Uh, this is also free. And uh, learn about you know, digital science. So are there jobs? Do I want to, you know, learn more about digital science, about maybe possibilities of my, develop my career path as a digital scientist? Well, that's something which, a oh, digital innovator, and learn more about this uh, transformation, actually, which industry is going toward, uh, even applying uh, our artificial intelligence. So this is something which I will put the link for you in uh, later after the session, because now I cannot do it because it will be not recorded, but after the session, so you can also very well come here to come to Leiden, and I will also participate in this event, also as an innovator. Uh, uh, so uh, hopefully we can also, some of you, uh, we can see each other. Um, so that's, uh, that's the next event related to jobs, potential jobs, networking, finding out about possibilities and learning about this digital scientific uh, innovative ecosystem. The next event which I'd like to share And remember that direct networking is also another way of applying and uh, being invited for your first interview. So for you, for those which try, which decide to 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 uh, join this event, please also have your maybe uh, uh, laptop or your um, telephone where you have your PDF of your CV. That would be really great because you never know who you meet, who who you will meet, and with who you will talk. Um, the next event, which is Startup Career Matchmaking, for all of the PhD students and postdocs which would like to join startups or scale-ups, uh, smaller companies than established like Johnson Johnson, uh, there will be organized online events. So I also wanted to share with you not only physical events, but online events. It's free event. It's called Startup, but it's also for scale-ups. Career, matchmaking, event. It will be in actually organized by IMEC, which is based in Belgium. And the date uh, of this event. Sorry, I think I made mistake. The previous one uh, is Digital Science Innovation Day is twenty third. Of, of April, but this one will be May 2nd. So I, I will, sorry, if I will correct that in the, in the comment box. So it's 2nd May. This one is 2nd May. And it's uh, online. As I said, organized by Belgium organization from 5 p.m. to 7.30. So two and a half hours. One to one, you can talk to different startups, different scale ups, and uh, maybe you will be uh, invited for interview. That's that's another possibility. So I think with uh, this events, uh, I would like to maybe um, wrap uh, wrap the session. Uh, I will, as I said, put these links for. Uh, BCF event 30 of May, uh, Digital Science Innovation Day 23rd of April. So the earliest which comes is 23rd of April here in Leiden. It's physical event in, in Leiden Bioscience Park. Uh, then the next event is uh, 2nd of May. It's online startup uh, scale-up career matchmaking event, uh, which is uh, organized by IMEC. And then um, the... Uh, even after this uh, Belgium online event, there is BCF career event, 30th of May in Utrecht. So uh, 
that's something which I'd like to share with you today. Uh, I hope you find it, first of all, useful. Please also, if you have questions, if you have comments, please put it in the, after the session. I, um, uh, after the session, please uh, put it there. If you're interested in coaching, uh, I'm very happy to uh, help you out to find a well-met job and coach you in this uh, process from academia to industry transition. So I'm really, really happy uh, to also arrange if you want to ask some more questions before we start coaching. Uh, you are very uh, welcome to contact me uh, by LinkedIn. I think that's the quickest. Uh, so uh, that's the quickest how we can uh, uh, connect. So I hope uh, that you will participate in some of these uh, events. And I know that there is always time uh, and timing and not always you can participate in all these events. But even in Leiden, this event is for four hours starting from nine. Uh, you know, you don't have to say for all events. You can be also for, for, for two hours, not for all of the events. So uh, that also helps you at least uh, to already orientate about especially digital uh, uh, digital jobs because they, they, they will be more digital more and more digital jobs this digital digital uh, also sector is very quickly um, uh, growing uh, so that's uh, that's something which I'd like to tell you to pay attention also regarding this uh, this event uh, and uh, yes if you uh, want to also uh, empower this channel uh, please uh, please subscribe. Uh, that I would be really happy uh, to, to see more subscribers uh, and uh, that we can really grow a great global community. That's actually my dream. So I hope that this dream will come true, uh, if not this year, the next uh, coming years, and we can uh, build really a wonderful community uh, where we can exchange um, ideas, but also where we can help each other and help to create, especially as together as a community, a brighter future and sustainable, bigger community we have, we can create way more brighter, but especially way more sustainable future for PhD students uh, and postdocs globally. And that's what fascinates me also as a coach in this process, which is contributing, which is building also, which becomes online actually community builder for PhD students and postdocs. So uh, warm greetings from uh, Leiden Bioscience Park. Uh, and see you at the next session, uh, which is going to happen in two weeks. So just uh, tune in, uh, connect to me on LinkedIn, and you will hear, uh, see all the informations regarding the next sessions. So uh, thank you very much, and see you next time. Bye.